perfect for fans of Neil Gaiman. All of my metaphors now will be theme park related. I could see that being great. I'm a terrible friend. Excited to hopefully like one of our book club books. Just kidding, I have one more thing to announce. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my September TBRs, plural. First things first, before I forget, I want to call out this super cute t-shirt that I'm wearing from Thread Tank. I got this t-shirt because Elle from Elliot Brooks um, collaborated with them to design some kind of like booktube, booktube-ish kind of designs. Um, she designed two t-shirts, um, one is for pet lovers um, and the other one is uh, this one, which I think, I think this one is called like the book dragon one. Um, so obviously it has a dragon and books on it and the spines most of them say interesting and then this one says unique on it um the joke being that like people on booktube tend to say that books are interesting <laughs> and they just say that over and over and over again which like it's true we do and then i was talking to her about this design and i don't if this was like an accidental joke but i thought it was funny and i thought this was intentional and it works anyway um, that like this one big book says unique and it's the only one that says that and to be unique is to be one of a kind And this is the one book that says unique while the most of the rest of them say interesting. So um, I enjoy Many aspects to this t-shirt. So yeah, she's collaborating with them. I I don't want to tell a lie I think she has a discount code for you. So go see her about that <laughs> but regardless um, super cute designs um, and thank you to Elle for um, sending one of these shorts my way. Okay, but so my TBRs, plural. Um, I have two TBRs <laughs> um, because I have a TBR of books that are kind of just general obligations <laughs> and just general reads that like I have slated for September because I said I would be buddy getting it in September or um, or whatever. And then I have a separate TBR because I really wanted to read um, Dark Academia in the beginning of fall. And I, I can't just put all my spooky, moody books in October and we'll just have a repeat of last year. I have 30 books on my TBR and I can't read them all. So I decided to make a separate TBR of Dark Academia specific books. And I hope very much to vlog a lot of my Dark Academia reading in September and do like some very, I don't know, aesthetic and moody reading vlogs with, you know, candles and darkness and my Dark Academia books and tea and whatnot. Watch now, I won't have any time to vlog at all. But that's what I hope to do and that's why I have a whole separate Dark Academia TBR. All right, so without further ado, just kidding, I have one more thing to announce. I thought about doing a separate video announcement for this, but like, why? I'll just tell you here and now, because um, it's kind of a TBR related announcement. So starting next month, October, myself and Alex from Alex Nieves and Jimmy from the Fantasy Network, so the three of us, are gonna be hosting a Song of Ice and Fire read-along uh, with live shows on each of our channels accompanying this read-along. So we're gonna read a book a month starting in October. So Game of Thrones in October, uh, Clash of Kings in November. It's, this is a test if I remember the books. <laughs> Storm of Swords in December, Feast for Crows in January, and Dance with Dragons in February. And I think we are also doing Fire and Blood. That's what it's called, right? Um, which would be then the sixth book slash month, so into March. Any whoosies, yes. So look out for that plan ahead. Uh, that's why I wanted to tell you guys now. So like, I know that I start thinking about next month's TBR like at the beginning of the previous month. Um, you know, maybe you're not crazy like me, but FYI, we will be starting that next month. So if you want to join us, please plan to put Game of Thrones on your TBR in October. For realsies, without any further ado, my TBRs for September. Before I forget, because I have uh, just one book. Yes, just one book that I don't have a physical copy of. So before I forget it, um, I'm reading Tigana by Guy Gabriel K. Um, because my patrons have chosen that book for me to read and vlog for them. So, I mean, I'll, I will talk about it in my wrap up, but I will be vlogging it for patrons. Um, they picked it for me. <laughs> I feel excited slash nervous about this one because while Tigana is like fairly well reviewed, I have heard complaints about Guy, Guy, uh, Guy Gabriel K's writing that make me hesitate, but I, I hope I will like it. I've heard great things and it is certainly like a widely discussed and, and again pretty revered book so I'm interested at the very least to see how I do with that so Tigana will be what I read. <laughs> like all the rest of the books I have physical copies of. So uh, The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. This is the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club pick for September. It is my pick so the live show for it at the end of the month will be on my channel which the date for that is I, September 25th, I think. It's always the last Saturday of the month. So whatever the last Saturday of the month is, will be on my channel where we'll discuss The Goblin Emperor. Um, this is an older book. It's not 
like a brand new release, but I've been wanting to read it for a very long time. And it is a multiple award winner. Um, the Logos Award, the Nebula Award. Um, okay, no, it's a Logos Award winner. And it is a finalist for the Nebula and Hugo Awards. And it is also a finalist for World Fantasy uh, for Best Novel. So again, I've been wanting to read this for a long time. Uh, and Bethany's already read it and she said it was pretty good. So I'm excited to hopefully like one of our book club books for once. <laughs> Next up I have a reread, which I'm reading with multiple people. Dune by Frank Herbert. I've already read this, but with the film coming out, I wanted to reread it. And Bethany also wants to reread it. So I'll be buddy reading it with Bethany. And also my patrons want to read it. So I'll be buddy reading it with my patrons and with Bethany and I believe Alex from Alex Nieves is hosting a read-along on his channel. I'm not doing that. Uh, he's actually hosting a proper read-along. So if you are not one of my patrons and you're not Bethany and you want people to read it with, um, Alex is doing that over on his channel. So check that out if you're interested. I'm excited to revisit this. I have had time to think about it. I doubt that I, I doubt I will like it more than I liked the first time. But nevertheless, it's a meaty book with a lot of details and themes and things. So I'm excited to kind of see more the second time through since I just went to a bunch of theme parks. All of my metaphors now will be theme park related metaphors. So kind of like when you've ridden a ride multiple times, like the first time through, you're just kind of like, oh, wow. And then the second time through, you're like, oh, I'm starting to notice how they do this. And then the third time through, you're like, I wonder how they do this. And you start to notice like things like, oh, I didn't notice that like animatronic over there that time. That's cool. And like, oh, I didn't even notice that they had that part over there. Like, oh, that's really cool. So taking in more of the sights and sounds of Dune the second time through. This is so shiny, I apologize for how shiny this is. I had a super cool copy of it. You might remember that I had that super cool copy. The one that's like an anniversary one that's like all golden and bronzy and and has like Paul on the cover with the blue eyes and everything. Um, and I gave that copy to my dad. I did not get rid of it, I gave it to my dad. So I still have this copy, which I had then as well. I just splurged on a fancy one because I'm me. Anyway, Dune will be read by me and all of these other lovely folks before the movie comes out. <laughs> Next up I have both The Winter's Tale and The Gap of Time uh, by William Shakespeare and Jeanette Winterson respectively. This is the next on me and Heather's list for the Hogarth Shakespeare project. Can I call it a project? Uh, if you don't know, Heather, my friend Heather and I are buddy reading the play and the retelling the play and the retelling for all of the Hogarth Shakespeare retellings that there are. They haven't done all the plays, um, so the ones that exist. So on September we are tackling Winter's Tale and it's retelling The Gap of Time. And there will be a live show on my channel to discuss our thoughts and feelings about whether or not this was successful. <laughs> so join us both for reading and discussing it if you feel so inclined. If you're a Shakespeare nut like me, please, please, please join us. Next up, I have my Book of the Month Club book because my, my plan for the year to keep up with them is to read the previous month's Book of the Month Club book in the subsequent month. I didn't have a Book of the Month Club book in my previous TBR because I had skipped that month before. So I did skip in August, so I have August's book for September. God, that was convoluted. Um, and that was The Inheritance of Orqueda Divina by Zoraida Cordova. And I've never read anything by Zoraida Cordova. I have... Is this her adult debut? It might be. I have come from a book box. Um, Incendiary? I haven't read it. I have no idea if I'd like. But I've generally heard pretty positive things about Zoraida Cordova's writing. And this is her first adult book. And it sounds pretty swell. So I'm excited to read it. Slash I have to because I've decided that I have to read my Book of the Month Club books as I get them. And last on my Not Dark Academia TBR is The Trouble with Beast by Joe Abercrombie because I am rereading all the first love books this year in anticipation of the release of the third and final book in the Age of Madness trilogy, The Wisdom of Crowds, which comes out this month. Uh, oh my god. I mean, that's not on my TBR, Wisdom of Crowds, because it comes out in September, like at the end of September. So like in, I, I want to put Wisdom of Crowds on my October TBR, but I can't promise that I won't drop everything the moment Wisdom of Crowds comes out and read it immediately. <laughs> we'll see how much self-control I have, but I'm definitely reading The Trouble of Peace before then. Um, so that I'm all set and I'm, I'm just like, I've been waiting all this time for this. So when Wisdom, come, Wisdom of Crowds comes out, that's like, I'm like done for the year. Like, I don't care. Like the, the year is over. <laughs> so anyway, I'm super pumped for that. I uh, hope you are too, because you know, Abercrombie's and Trouble with Peace, to date, is my favorite first law book. I'm waiting for Wisdom of Crowns to dethrone it, no pressure. Okay, on to my Dark Academia TBR, which is all these books. Okay, I don't know why I do this to myself. So 
I, I guess I want to, I don't know. I, I don't, there is no like cut and dry what is or is not dark academia. There's some books that are like absolutely for sure dark academia, but it's harder to say what isn't dark academia. So these books either are definitely are dark academia or they have something about them that I think is what I look for in dark academia and therefore I lump it in with it because something about its vibe or its tone or its its themes or its setting or its type of thing that it is to me is like the same kind of thing that I get out of dark academia. So asterisk aside, here are the books for my dark academia TBR. First up is Middle Game by Seanan McGuire. Um, this book I don't know too much about. I wanted to read this last year around Halloween time and I didn't. Um, and I think a sequel was either just announced or just came out or is about to come out or whatever, but there is going to be a sequel. I thought this was a standalone and it might have originally been a standalone. When I've heard people talking about this book who have read it or were blogging it, I get very kind of like Frankenstein vibes. And to me, even though Frankenstein is like a horror novel, I really feel like Frankenstein is very similar to me or like I think of it a lot when I think of Dark Academia. And I love Frankenstein. It's probably my favorite classic. I don't know if I have... Oh, well, Ivanhoe is my favorite classic. Scratch what I just said. So Frankenstein is my second favorite classic. <laughs> and definitely, I think, has a lot of the trappings of dark academia. I mean, Victor Frankenstein, tell me he wouldn't get along with the cast of The Secret History. And anyway, I get the... I, I think this book has to do with kind of reanimation. And it, it might be animation of an automaton or something like that, as opposed... Or a doll. Not a dead body? Or it might be a dead body? I'm not entirely sure. I don't, I don't like to know too much about it, but based on the cover, based on the little bit that I know about it, based on the vibe I get from this cover and the vibe I get from when people talk about it, I think this fits in with Dark Academia. Next up is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is a book that I have meant to read for a very, very long time, and I'm finally getting around to it. Why is this book so heavy? Does it have pictures? It has pictures in it. I mean, this is about a boarding school for peculiar children. I saw the movie when it came out, which was a long time ago now, and I, I remember not loving the movie, I also remember people who did love the books saying the movie was not a great adaptation of the books, so it in no way put me off from the idea of reading the books, which are fairly beloved, and they certainly have always intrigued me. Like, just the style of it with these kind of, like, black and white photographs of these peculiar children, which this book is peppered with, like, like that. It is, it kind of also reminds me of the aesthetic and vibe of, like, a Victorian circus, um, which to me is also adjacent to Dark Academia. It's this kind of I don't know, the, the unsettling yet scholarly, the kind of fringes of society, but in a, I don't know, very literary way. And they are, they are at a boarding school. Um, so yeah, I, I think this definitely fits Dark Academia. Next up I have some middle grade, which is Nevermore. Um, the first book in is the, the Trials of Morgan Crow is the name of the series, I think. I actually have all three of these books because um, I just bought them all because that's what I do. I will actually be buddy reading um, this book with Vish from Books with V? Books with Vish. Books with V. Is that her name? I mean, the name of the channel? Her name is Vish. Is it Books with V? Yes, why am I second guessing this? I'm a terrible friend. Well, anyway, um, she also got all these books. She didn't buy all three books without reading them. Someone bought them for her. That is a lot more reasonable than me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're gonna buddy read this and this is a magical school and it's about a witch. And I just, yeah, like, I think this will be less on the side of, like, dark academia. But nevertheless, like, it says perfect for fans of Neil Gaiman. And Neil Gaiman tends to write even children's literature is kind of, like, on the slightly unnerving, slightly twisted, slightly dark side. Like, whimsically dark. And again, it's a school setting. So I feel like, again, this feels like it vibes with the tone that I'm looking for. Next up, I have The Barry Shelley Club by Goldie Mold Moldavs Moldavsky. Um, this book, I believe... Um, is more on the side of horror and less on the side of like contemporary dark academia. Nevertheless, it does take place at a school and this club that is called the Mary Shelley Club. And uh, this club is, it, they do like elaborate and kind of horrific pranks in this school, which like the name Mary Shelley Club, like I think that evokes, and I obviously know that it's not that, something more like Dead Poets Society where it's kind of like a club that wants to Kind of, or like the secret history, but instead of Greek classics, they're into like uh, early horror, like Frankenstein or I don't like Dracula, but Dracula uh, and that kind of th stuff. But um, no, they're actually doing like kind of horrific pranks um, at the school. And then that's kind of all I know about it. Again, I don't want to know too much, but so that's, it is a school setting and they are doing dark things 
ergo dark academia. <laughs> Second to last, I have The Ivies by Alexa Dunn. I've never read anything by Alexa Dunn before. I've known of her for a long time. Um, she's predominantly written like uh, YA kind of more romantic stories and that's just like not my cup of tea. So uh, I've never really felt called to pick anything up by her, but I really like her like as a person. I've seen like a a lot of like, YouTube. she has her own YouTube channel and I, she's like friends with some of my booktube friends who I've seen her in live. So she seems like a really great person. And she's finally written something that is more my speed. So I'm excited to finally pick something up by her uh, that it sounds up my alley. Uh, the Ivies is about an elite girls boarding school and uh, I guess they're preparing for uh, college entrance, but I believe it also gets very dark and backstabby, has a lot of like twists and turns. Um, it's been compared to Gossip Girl, which I never watched, but you know. I could see that being great. Yeah, it's, uh, Alexa Dunn delivers a nail-biting and timely thriller about teens who would kill to get into the Ivy League, literally. So yeah, I've heard this is just like very intense and soapy and dramatic. And if this is like the fourth season of Riverdale in which it is basically a dark academia plotline where Jughead goes to this like really elite boarding school where they are like kind of murdery, uh, if it's like that, so here for it. And last but not least is a book that I previously put on my TBR and then I told y'all that I purposely took it off my TBR and moved it because I was planning this TBR. That is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. Um, this was my book of the month club book a couple months ago and for that reason it was like obligatory to put it on my TBR but I was like no no no, no. I want to have a whole Dark Academia TBR in fall and I must save it for that. So the time is ripe for the maidens. So I'm very, very excited about this. I've heard pretty excellent things about this, like when people had early copies of it. So it was kind of like a force of will to be like, no, 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 you will wait and you will read this in the proper season. So the time has come and I'm so pumped to be wearing orange and lighting candles and reading The Maidens. So let me know in the comments down below um, if you'll be reading any of the books that I'm reading, if you have read any of the books that I'm reading, if you'll be joining us for our, uh, any of the read-along buddy reading thingies that are occurring. <laughs> Whatever, let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you.